Page 39, take me out to the ball game. On page 37, they give you a rhythm review, which doesn't hurt any. We, you got to know that stuff, so you just as well. My problem with it is they don't give you all the information you need in order to do the review. So far, we've had four four time signature and a three four time signature, as far as I can remember. I don't know if we've had any other time signatures or not, but that's it. But if the duration, what they call it, how long a note lasts, that depends on the time signature. So if you want to know the duration, you got to know what the time signature is. And they don't give you one. They don't say, assume it's 4-4 time or 3-4 time or whatever. Technically, it can't be 3-4 time in all of them. But I guess we can assume that it's, or pretend that it's 4-4 time. And they give you the first one, the quarter note, that's what it looks like, and it lasts in 4-4 four, four time, it lasts for one count, or one beat. A beat and a count is the same thing in, in what we're talking about. The second one, that little squiggly thing that I say looks like a bird diving down, yay, or which way you're going, I don't know which way you're going. Well, that's a quarter rest. Should I be giving you the names of these and what these are? You, you need to know what these are. That's a quarter rest, and it lasts for one count. So I'm going to pretend that it's 4-4 four, four time for all of these, so one count. The third one is that circle, open circle, well that's a whole note. And it's the same as four quarter notes, so in 4-4 four, four time it would be four counts. After that is a circle with a, a stem on it, and that's a half note. Well, two halves and a whole, so a half note's going to get two counts, because a whole note got four, a half note gets half of that. Then. Okay. After that is a half note with a dot behind it called hmm, dotted half note. There we go again. Okay. Remember the dot gets half the value of the note. Well, the note gets two counts, the half note. So the dot's going to get one. You, you just put them together. So total, a dotted half note is three counts. All right. Under that is what looks like a quarter note, but it's got a little flag. Well, that's called an eighth note. An eighth note is half of a quarter note. So it gets half the value. Therefore, if a quarter note gets one count, an eighth note's going to get a half a count. Under that, there are four notes. They look like quarter notes with two beams across connecting them. Keep in mind, those beams and that little flag of the note above it are the same thing. If there were only one of these little notes, there's four of them. If there were only one of them, then it would have two flags. But when there's multiples, they hook them together with the beams. See, in the eighth note above it, if there were two eighth notes or more, they would hook them together with one beam going across, is how it works. So that these four notes are half of an eighth note, or a sixteenth note. You see the numbers double? We're dealing sort of like fractions here. So the bigger the number, the smaller the note. Well, that's music for you. What do you, you think it's going to make sense? Anyway, if a quarter note gets one count, an eighth note gets a half a count, then these things are going to get one fourth of a count, or all four of them together get one count. They're the same as one quarter note. Sixteenth, there's four sixteenth notes in a quarter note. Then under that, there is a quarter note with a dot behind it. It works the same way as the half note with a dot behind it. It's This is a dotted quarter note. Well, a quarter note gets one count, the dot gets half of that, that's a half a count, so together the dotted quarter note gets one and a half counts. Then the boxes. I've talked about these boxes at the bottom. The next to the bottom box, is, there's a little line, it looks like a hat. That actually represents a line on the staff, so it's sitting on a line there. And if it sits on a line, it's a half rest. If it sits below the line or hangs below the line, it's a whole rest. Remember, the way I remember these is the half rest is smaller in value. It gets two counts. The whole rest being bigger, it gets four counts. The whole rest is heavier, so it hangs below. And the half rest sits on top. And that's how I remember which is which. So the, the last two, you have a half rest, which gets two counts, and a whole rest, which gets four counts. Oh, the whole rest has other things that can happen, but I, I'm not talking about anything else right now. It's just, it's the same as a whole note as far as 
duration or how long it lasts. Then, of course, on page 30, well, 8, 38, they give you the partial prep thing, but I prefer to use the music, so let's go talk about the music. Page 39. Three, four time now. One sharp in the key signature. We're in the key of G major. Make sure you can do the G major scale. I have a video out on the G major scale. You need to do the stuff I explain in the video for the beginner level, the one octave. The accents and the flexing the wrist like I do, the technique for the trill exercise, especially the trill exercise. Do that and learn the G scale. And this thing is two lines long. I don't see any repeat signs or anything. We're just going to go straight through it. Okay. One hand at a time. Let's make sure we get the fingering and rhythms and all that. I don't think the rhythm will be a problem, but the fingering and all that. So you're starting out with the right hand on a little, little finger on G, and that puts you in this position. You're not going to stay here, but this is where you start. And you see a ha the little box so sitting on the line. That's a half rest, two counts. So the, th the quarter note comes on beat three. Three, one, two, and they bring the thumb down. Two, and then they want to come down again. That's a bit of a stretch. I'm going to suggest, because you need to learn to do this anyway, is when you do the, the when you play that, come claps right quick and use third or fourth finger either one. On the D, this makes it easier to reach the A. And if that's a stretch, then when you do that, you use fourth finger. And then do that. We change hand positions, but the, to me that's easier than stretching from here to here. If you have real little hands, that is. If you have big hands, it doesn't matter. You can use the fingering of the book. Big deal. And then second line is similar. That's tied. You hold that down for two counts. Then the third line are measure nine. Remember the numbers at the beginning of the lines above the staff are measure numbers. So measure nine. Then the D sharp. And then bring thumb down and the rest of it. D natural. You don't need a natural sign in front of that D. It's a natural anyway because the sharp in the previous measure is only good for that measure. They're being nice to you, but it's almost like they're being too nice to you. You can take a pencil and scribble that out if you want. It just You don't need a natural sign there. It's a natural. Measure 13, they come up during the rest of here. One, two, and then measure 14, they give you a sharp sign. Why are they giving you a sharp sign? I have no idea. They're being a little too nice. Shamey, shamey. You don't need a sharp sign here. It's another sharp anyway. It's in the key signature. Now, last measure on page 39. You're here, cross over, second finger. If you'll relax, you can cross over some. You don't have to twist around or nothing. Just cross over and relax. Rest. So the last two measures on page 39 here, here, cross over, rest. And during the rest, you come back up and do some more of what you've already done. Let's go to the second line on page 40. You're here. And then for the last measure, you're going to use third finger. So I've talked about this before, too. You have a repeated note. There are measures 23 and 24. It's an E, and then you can play the E again. Now, the E is tied. You don't play the tied note again. You hang on to the note. But you, on the second beat, there's another E. You got to play that. So we take advantage of the tied notes, and we change hand positions. We do it all the time. So you're here on that one, and then just go ahead and lift up. Because you got to lift up anyway. It's a, it's a repeated note. We take advantage of that little silence we get automatically to change hand positions. So here and then here. And now 25. It's an E and a G. And this is tricky. Here, to go from here to here. You need to connect them. Don't do. No. Connect them. And that's hard. It's awkward. So, a little technique here. I want to do this. You can do 
that okay. But now, instead of one note, I want to do two notes. Well, I'm going to use the same technique I would use in playing any two notes. Anywhere. Just, I'm, I put my hand in that position, and I lower the hand down, lower the weight down, and let the weight and the hand push the notes down. So it's here. Well, I don't come way up and do that. It's just a little motion. So the fact that I'm playing a note already doesn't mean anything. I'm, I'm still going to lift the wrist up. I'm going to hold the note down. Hold the note down as I lower the weight. I'm just simply going to switch fingers, which are down. Over here, these fingers are ready. And as the weight comes down, these fingers come down. It takes a little practice to get them down at the same time. I can't do that. Maybe you can do that. But I've even heard pros not do it either. You should do it in both hands. It doesn't matter what the notes are. You just here. So we can do here. It sounds lovely. I know it does. But the, we're not after the sound. We're after the technique of doing this. Connecting it. That's what. So you can work on that little spot. So you can do that. When you've done it a few hundred times, it's not quite so bad. And then going on, the last, this is a major 27, the quarter notes. They want some here. That's okay. If you happen to have really big hands and really fat fingers, that may not work for you. So you simply switched, instead of second here, switch them. Put some here and second here. Here. You just switch those two fingers around. So, it, in that case, it would be thumb, two, and then back to third finger on the E for major 29. Or the fingering in the book if your hands are small enough, that's fine. And then you have a B and a G at the end. And that's tied for two measures, so you're going to hold it down for six counts. Left hand, well, you're starting here. And then the next measure, you got to be in here, so you're sort of in this position. So it's one, two, rest. One, two, three. Remember, dotted half notes is the same as three quarter notes. It gets three counts in three, four time. And then they want two, four. Well, just bring, that's okay. Bring it up here. This is the same technique I just talked about before. I'm going from here to here. The weight pushes the notes down. So I got the first note down and I raise the wrist a little and as I lower the wrist I'm simply switching fingers and the weight's pushing the notes down. Here to here. It takes a little time to get it. But try and connect them here. And they don't need the natural sign and sharp sign and all that junk in there. You don't need any of that. The key signature tells you you got an F sharp and that's it. Second line's the same way. Third line, measure nine. You're here now. This is a B and a G sharp. Because you came off of this. Now you're going to go up to here. I don't have a lot of help for you for large hands unless you do that. Here. But if you can, use the fingering in the book. Here. And that's tied for two measures. And then you come up both. A C and an A. So each note just comes up one. Here. That's fine. Measure 13, now you gotta go down to an A and a G. So you're coming from here, measure 12 to measure 13. This goes down one note, that goes down two. And that's tied, and then you back, to, and I don't agree with this 2 4 for measure 15 here. Because I wanna connect them, and I can't connect that very well, so I'm gonna do a, th a 3 2 here. I think that's much better. Then you have rests, and then uh, you got some more of that. Let's go over to page 40, second line. It's measure 23. It's here. And they want a thumb doing all of these. I don't recommend it. That's a, that's a beginner's fingering. I know this is beginner's music, but I want to push you a little bit. Let's use a better fingering here. Here, I'm going to use second finger on that G sharp. And an A. This fingering will serve you well, whatever you get. It will help a lot if you can learn to do that. So just second finger and then thumb. And then going on, measure 25, start with the second finger for the first one and 
and then thumb. Again, we just took advantage of the repeated note to change your finger. And then a, G, a C sharp. You can do a one if you put a five on it. I prefer four. And then a four. And then the B G sharp. We've had this before. The bottom measure thirty again a, a three two not four two. And then, then reach down. Yeah, you work out the hands one at a time to make sure the fingering works for you. And then we try and put it together. And usually it all falls apart, but that's okay. We'll put it together slowly. I'm not concerned about hesitating. So here we have a half note, and when I play the G, I lift up. So there's only one note at a time here. Two. And then these go together. I know it sounds wonderful, but just keep going. And then here. Now, if you want, because I told you you can use three and two on these others, if you want to use three and two on this also, keep them the same, that's fine. And so you're here, and the hold the left hand down is tied, and then go on, one, two, these are together, here, that, both hands are tied, and then measure nine, Left hand down, it's tied. There. Measure 13. Left hand's tied. There. On the last measure of the page, the left hand comes up. So the last two measures at the bottom, this is measure 15. Here, cross over. Connect all those notes. We want them to connect them all together. And you want some more of that. You go through and put the hands together. And then go back through it a few million times or whatever it takes and get rid of the hesitation. So it is a nice steady beat all the way through. As far as articulation goes, there's none provided. This is one of those songs that is kind of a happy party song. And the idea is just to get to know the song and get into the song and whatever articulation you feel, that's what you play. Usually you connect it. Left up. So you can follow the sentences and the words to tell you where the phrases are. The left hand, you pretty much just connected them. I mean, the left hand sometimes gets melody or not chords, but you just get to know it and you get to feeling it. And you, you'll maybe put in some staccatos if you feel like it, or some accents if you feel like it. It's up to you. It's called interpreting the music. As far as the dynamics go, or the louds and softs, well, this is a party song. It's loud. As far as the speed goes, well, it's a happy song. <laughs> How fast would you want to take it? If you were going to sing it, I don't know. up to you on how fast you play it and what mood you're in or whatever. Just enjoy it. Have fun with it. I'd like to play with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. So I'll give us three counts and let's just do it together. One, ready, go. One, two. Three.